Okay, everybody will start with opening um, the useful tips and tools in Excel. And I'm going to open mine now. So, yeah, yeah. So we have we have quite a lot to cover in this in this section. And what I'm primarily focusing on in this area, in, in this section is understanding um, Excel in a very high level and some data cleansing tools, right? Or some general tools that will help you um, improve your efficiency in Excel, basically. My is not opening um, to Chuku. Please watch the issue. The password is, I'm going to put the password again. So in case I have any other issue, please just let me know. It's meant to open. That's the password. So um, I don't know if you can see if you can see me, but if you can see me, so Excel is very into two, right? Rows and columns. And it may look very basic, but it's actually the foundation of um of, of everything, even formulas, right? So and, and you you understand what rows are and what columns are. I I used to be very confused. I don't know about you, but at, at some time, even sometimes up to now, I still have to remind myself, right? So this is how I I, I do it. Rows is like row, 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 row. You're both you you row your boat like this, right? So rows are horizontal, columns are vertical, right? Rows are horizontal. So rows are, are in numbered, I mean, are numbered, while columns are lettered, right? So rows, we have this row one, row two, row three. You don't have, you don't have row A, row B, row C. These are the rows. Rows are numbered, while columns are lettered. So you have column A, column B, column C, column D. It's very important, right? Column, then rows. The next thing that's important to note is that when Excel, when Excel is, um, when Excel is trying to read something, um, I mean, read the particular cell, right? So this is cell, right? Excel reads with column, then roll. Column, then roll, right? Quick one, what is what is um, lettered? Is it roll or column that's lettered? Anybody? What is lettered? Is it roll or column that's lettered? What is lettered? Is this rows or columns that are lettered? Anybody? You can meet your mic. I, I, I like to be very, very interactive, right? Okay. Columns, thank you very much for me. So yes. Mm. Columns, col columns are the ones that are lettered. These are the lettered ones, right? So when Excel is reading, so if you come to this place here, this box here, you can see I'm, I'm moving my, my cursor in. This is what you call the dialogue box, right? And the dialogue box you see is the name box, right? So if you see on this cell, Excel is seeing this as D5. Excel is seeing this as D5, right? So for Excel, for Excel, right? Um, this is role, I mean, column D, row five. So if we just from role, then column, it's very, very important. Role, then column, not column, then role. Is that is as simple as it is? Actually, quite important. The next thing we must know is that there's what you call a formula by year, right? And this this basically shows you um what 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 is being inputted, right, in the cell in a particular cell, right? So this these are all cells, and this is what you call a worksheet, right? And the full Excel what you call a workbook, right? So these are the workbook different worksheets inside this particular workbook and this is a particular cell. And a cell is made up of rows and columns, right? But don't forget, Excel, um, Excel always, 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 right? So this with column, then rows, right? The next thing I would like to just um, um, show us, these are just useful tips, right? So in case, in case you cannot say it at the end of the class, I mean, you will be able to go up with something that you can easily use, right? The next thing is fast scrolling. Very basic, but very, I mean, very useful, right? But for any, anyone just joining, we are using, um, we have started with the first, we downloaded the course materials, and we're using, um, we opened the first document, useful tips and tools, and the password is what I just pasted on the chat room, so you can open it as well. So now, imagine you have this long set of data. This data we have up to fifteen thousand rows, right? In in in, in this particular data set, and you want to scroll to the last one or something, right? The last, the last um, row, right? If I use your arrow key alone to move down, it can take you eternity to actually get to wherever you're getting to, right? So the easiest way, right, is to press the Control plus arrow down key. So I'm going to type it here, control plus arrow down key, right? 
and the control plus arrow down key will take you to the last active cell in a particular data set. So if I'm in price, for example, and I want to get to the last active cell, I just press control down and I get and, and I get to the last active cell. It makes my work easier. I'm, I'm able to scroll down across multiple data sets, right? Very, very fast without having to go it, I mean, go one by one. The next thing I, I would like us to note that in Excel, there are a million and one ways to do a million and one things, right? So no matter, I mean, no matter what I teach you today, right? You just know that there are always, I mean, for everything I teach you, there, there is like one hundred and I mean, over, I mean, there are multiple ways basically, right? To do any particular thing in Excel, right? But your proficiency in Excel will show, right? How you use it, right? Or the, the different situation that you are faced with will reveal which of the following methods you use, right? So, I mean, when you get to formula, you understand more, right? But just, it's just for us to note that there are multiple ways to do multiple things in Excel, right? And even, I will not be covering the basics, right? So for fixed referencing, we'll get to it where we get to um, our formula. So I will skip this. The next thing is text column, right? Now, it was one that I mentioned that before we get to this area. Now, imagine you are given a, a particular data set, right? Um, and let me give you a true life example, right? I was working in the bank and in the bank, right? And I will use this to explain both text to column and data validation, right? And you know how people, let's say you are in charge of data that other people gives you, right? And most times when people give you data, it's not always in the, in the particular format you want it, or it just anyhow. For example, we have the data set of people's name, people's gender, people's age, and people's salary, all lumped up into one. So let's say somebody was typing it and it's just important to just, you know, put it in separate columns, you just lump them together and like, oh my God, what would I do? Or the name, the name and this, the name and the surname are together, but you want to separate it and you have a long data set, right? So most of the things that I will teach you now, you might not appreciate it for small for smaller things, but when you have larger data sets, you get to you begin to see the value. So let's say you have something like this and you, you want to move it from all into one text into in, into multiple columns. Right? Remember, columns are lettered, columns are lettered, corals are numbered. Right, so the first way to do it, as I said, there are multiple ways, right? As I said, there are, all, there are multiple ways, multiple ways to do this, right? So the first way to do it is we have Andrew Cooper. Andrew Cooper is a male, he's 45 years, and he earns $80,000 and salary. So the first way to do it is let's say I type Andre, the first column. Next one is Cooper. Next one is male. Next one is 45 years. Sorry, I'll put the 45 years together. 45 years. Next one is 18,000. Sorry, dollar sign, not hand sign. Now, this is what I've done, right? So I've done, I've, I've, I've inputted it once. The next thing to do is that you come under the first one you inputted and you press, I'm going to type it here for us to see, control, plus E, uh, control E. So when I get here, I press control E. That will call flash field, right? So Excel is, I don't know about Excel, Excel is very smart, right? So you can almost tell, I don't know, so Excel is smart, but Excel thinks in a linear manner. And you understand when we get to formulas. Excel is smart, but he only thinks linearly. That means he follows patterns, right? So he observes patterns and follow that pattern, right? And by the way, in primary school and secondary school, that they, they, that they will give you two, four, six, eight, and take you what comes next, right? So Excel will understand the pattern that you are using and follow that pattern. So Excel has seen that what you did for the first one was that you separated Andre, right? So, okay, I think, I should, and I press Control E, flash field. So Excel followed the same pattern. If I go to Cooper and I press Control E again, under Cooper, Control E, you see, you see what Excel did? It says, Excel just look at what I did the first one. I said, the first thing you did that, you took the first word, I did it. You do the second word, I did it, right? You call me a control E again, does the same thing, control E again, does the same thing, control E again, it does the same thing, right? So with just doing the first one, with between Excel, what's, what the logic is in the first one, and pressing control E, it was able to flash fill, right? Into all other columns and it saves a lot of time. Instead of typing everything one, one by one by one by one, you just control E and it saves you a lot of time. 
that's one that's one method if there's any question please at any point in time you can stop me you can put in chat room please there's i mean it's it's you are spending some two hours yeah right so you must you, you must well get all the value from it right so in case i'm too fast or um you don't understand that anything, anything at any point just make sure you you draw us back right and i said there are multiple ways to do multiple things in excel right so even if this is a way right there's another way called text to column right and i'll just show you quickly right right how do this column so you go to your data tab right so we have we have various tabs in excel we have insert draw page layers, formulas, data review. There are some tabs that you see here. These three tabs are custom built, but, but generally, right, these are the major tabs. And some of you may not have developer tab in your Excel at the moment, right? You you have to call it out, but um, I, I don't think we'll get into developer tab at the moment, right? So if you go to data tab in Excel, right, you go to data tab in Excel, right? You will, under data tools, ribbon, you will see text to column, text to column. And, if you see what it's telling you, you say text column splits a single column of text into multiple, I mean, a single column of text into multiple columns, right? That's basically what we want to do here, right? Uh, as I said, there are multiple ways, right? So I'm just teaching us one of the other ways, right? But, but going forward, I'll just be sticking to just one way, right? But I don't just show you the possibility that even if I'm teaching something now, right? You may see something else, you're like, oh, I got, I, I mean, I, I did not realize that, right? But just not. The more you get familiar with Excel, right? The more um, the more you'll be able to understand all these things, right? And you, and you know which method to work in the, I mean, various scenarios, right? So I, the first thing I would do is highlight all my text. So I, I highlighted the text I want to move from text to column, right? And I click on text to column, right? So Excel is asking me something now, right? So this is a wizard, right? A like a step-by-step -step guide, basically, right? A step-by-step -step guide to the text. I mean, converting text column, right? So the, the first thing asking me is that, how is the data, right? Is, is, how is the data type? Is data type fixed width or delimited? Now let me explain very quickly what fixed width and delimited is. Fixed width, I mean, delimited, right? Which is what you, you most likely use for most of everything you do. But like, like I don't work where you're working, so it might, it might be different, but generally speaking, delimited is basically saying that, um, are there are there um, specific characters that differentiate each of these each of these um, letters you want to move? For example, now if we can have our data, we have Andre space Cooper space male space. So that means there's a delimiter, right? There's there's a character that separates each of these fields, right? There's there's like a character. The character is space, for example, right? Sometimes it may be comma, it may be um, semicolon, it, it, it may be anything, right? So yeah, yeah, we know that these are delimited, right? So there's a particular delimiter between each of the characters. But some other people may use fixed width, right? Fixed width is when the fields are aligned in column with space between each other, right? So that, that means, let's say all the names are four lettered, all the, all the surname are seven lettered. So it, there, there's a fixed width between the first character and the second character and the third character and the fourth character. There's a fixed width, right? But this, the names are not... um. It will distributed, so we use the limiter, which you, you most likely use for most of your um, Excel um, um, text column. If you're using text column, now it's asking us what is the delimiter, right? I'm using Excel. The delimiter we are seeing here is space, for example. So click on space, so you can see data preview here, right? So you see Andre Cooper male 45 years. So Excel has divided each of the each of the characters that I mean. Uh, after the space, it, it moved the next row. After the space, it moved the next. Every time Excel says space, it moved the, the, the meaning text to the next row. Basically, that was Excel did. Right? Now click on next. Right? So Excel asking us um, column data format as not, um, I mean, if we even get that, that area, but I'll just leave that. So Excel asking us for our destination. Basically, where do you want it to start? Do, do you want it to start in B4 or where exactly? Right? Remember, B4 is column B, row four, right? And column B, row four, here we have our original data, right? Let's say we want to start it in a separate column. So come here and we'll select C4, right? So Excel start in a separate column. Don't put it in B4. I still have my original data. And I click on finish, right? Our data already exists. I say, okay, bam. So what, what Excel does is that C. It has done similar thing that I did for um, using flash field, right? So 
do as I said, there are multiple ways to do um there are multiple ways to do a million and one things in Excel, right? So by all means, by all means, by all means, by all means, right? Just from writing yourself with um with the one you know, right? So we have um other ones that I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip alt enter because is is um okay, I'll just talk about wrap text, right? So let's say you have all for example, imagine you are typing something, for example, root um, salaries in euros in thousands, and um what we notice here is that it is spilling over to the next column, right? So for example, in column C, there's nothing there. If you look at the formula bar here, I, I click on column C, right? C4, right? There's nothing in the formula bar, but because of B4 is intruding into it. So let's say I type my name here in C. What will happen is that I cannot see the full spectrum of, of, of what I have here. So one way to usually do it is to wrap text. So if I come here and I go to my alignment, under my alignment tab in home, under home tab, alignment um, ribbon, I click on wrap text here. So you just compress it. It compresses that full thing into that particular cell, right? So it just makes me able to see it in a particular cell. Nothing fancy about that. It's just tool for you to, to use, right? Um, sorting data, right? Um, let me give you a quick tool again as well. This is not it's, it's not here, but it's just something that you know. Right? In Excel, right? For mass, master Excel users, right? Not master Excel users, but people that use Excel more often than not, right? What you notice that they they rarely or they reduce the amount of time they touch their mouse or their keypad, let's say laptop. Right, they they reduce the amount of time that they have to touch the mouse or the keypad, right? Um, because generally it it saves time. To, it saves time when you are the, the less the, the less time you touch the mouse or the keypad, the more efficient you are generally. Right? If you have to move your mouse at at, at every point in time, right, you are losing time, right? So that's why Excel shortcuts are there, right? And there are obviously many ways to get to Excel shortcuts, right? There are many, as I said, there are many and one ways to do many and one things in Excel, but I will just read this general rule of thumb, right? And um, you can you can now begin to figure it out by yourself, right? For example, um, if I want to get to data tab here, yeah, right? And I want to put a filter, basically a filter, this is a filter here, yeah, a filter helps for me to like um, properly narrow my data, like, um, Filter for what I, what I want or what I don't want. For example, we have this large data set. He has um, many years. He has many products, many products, um, many, I mean, convenience types. We have, I mean, um, types. We have convenience stores, hypermarkets, supermarkets. For product group, we have this large category of product group. So in case you want to see only, um, for example, we want to see only meat, for example. I come to meat. I can see just for meat as well, right? So it shows me all the meat in across all the years, right? So filter just easy. For, I mean, for for um to be able to probably drill down to um some specific um level of data for you to see what you, um what you have, right? But um there's an easier way to get to this filter, for example, right? And we we all know sort right. For example, we can sort this, we can sort this by alphabetical order, which it is at the moment, right? We can sort this by um alphabetical order from um producers. Come here, sort from A to Z, and it sorts from A to Z, right? I've I, I just on on did what I did, right? So we can sort it in various ways, right? So let's say we want to get to this filter, right? So we want to put so. We want to put this filter mark, right? On this filter mark, what will happen is that you see that there's almost like a drop down arrow in front of the headers, right? Excel was able to easily pinpoint that these are the headers, right? And put a drop down to them, right? So, but let's, let, let's assume we are, we're in, home, in, in the home tab and you, they ask you, oh, um, Tommy Singh, or oh, Blessing, please, can you just quickly put um, a filter on this, right? There are multiple ways to do it, as I said. You can just go to data tab and just click on filter, right? But I want to I want to use this to teach us um another shortcut in Excel, right? I mean it might, it might not be shortcut, but another way to reduce your press time on your mouse or your keypad is to press the alt key. So 
if you can see my screen, just say yes. I mean, if you can see the letters and numbers on my screen, just say yes. There are letter and number, there are letters and numbers on my screen at the moment. Can we see? Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Thank you. So all I pressed was the alt key. Right. And immediately Excel gave me some particular letters and numbers, right? So Excel saying, if you want to go to the home tab, press H. If you want to go to insert tab, press uh, N to draw tab J I. So this, this, like it, it told me where I need to go to, right? Um, that's nice, that's fancy. Okay, except what I want to go to is um, data tab, right? So data tab is A, right? So I press A. So if I press A, you see, another set of um, letters and number, I mean, shows, right? So now in data tab, if you want to do filter, press T. If you want to do text column, press E. If you want to do this, press this. Do you understand? It shows me. It almost like outlines everything. What I want to do is filter, right? So I press T, right? And immediately filters. So if I want to um, if I want to um, filter, instead of me going all the way, going to data tab, I'll just press Alt, A, T, and that's all, right? So sometimes you can see some people working on Excel, like, ah, what are they even pressing, right? That they, are, they, they, they just mastered the way not to use the keypad. Right, and it just makes you feel smarter. I mean, not feel smarter, or it makes you, um, or do feel smarter basically, right? The less the 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 less you press your keyboard, your keypad, and have to move one by one, one by one. It's, I mean, depending on you, right? So, I mean, as I said there are multiple ways to do multiple things, right? So it's good to just use that alt key, right? So let's just do something, um, something, uh. Simple as well. So let's assume everybody. Let's assume we want to click on name manager. Name manager is in formula and name manager here, yeah, right? Name manager, right? What is the alt like? And Im imagine you want to use the alt or something, something to get to name manager. What would be that alt blah 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 to get to name manager on that formula bar? So let's let's try. Everybody, please. You can you, you can type your answer in the chat room or you can omit your so I, I want to go to new manager in the formula tab. Let's try, let's try, let's try. Let's ask together, everybody, everybody. Everybody, let's try, let's try, let's try, let's try. I want to go to new manager in formula tab. And I want, I, and I want to use the alt key, alt something, something. Out something something. What am I using? Anybody? Anybody? Any tickers? Any tickers? And sorry, is it possible for Excel not to have name manager? Because I'm finding it difficult. In formula, name manager, yeah. I, I mean, I, I I have no idea, right? I mean, every Excel I've used, I, I'm not any, I'm, I mean, a Microsoft MP, MVP yet, so I don't know. But I mean, I mean for what I know, yeah, Formula Bar, main manager should be there. Or is it, I mean, is that is that problem always, always synonymous to you? Or does, does anybody else have that same problem? They can't find the manager. This is the manager in Formula Bar. Okay, I've seen it. Okay. Alternate M N from my India. Okay. Thank you. Who else again? I want I want like three people to be able to give me so I know that we are we are all together in this. Anybody? Anybody? Yes. What, what, what did you ask us to look for? Oh, I asked that we look for um name manager, right? On that formula, right? So using using the old stuff I I I I explained before, right? How do you get to name manager, right? And name manager is in from under the formula tab, right? So if you press Alt, sorry, you press the Alt key, right? Alt, what, what, what? So, alt, what, 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 what to give you name manager? Basically, that was the maximum for. To missing M. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, 
I think um, we've gotten it. That's alt, right? If 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 you press the alt key, oh sorry, if you press the alt key on your laptop, alt M, then N will give you the name manager in the Excel, right? And I will spare you this for now. Right? So yeah, that is um. So that is um working with name managers in, in Excel, right? Very, very um, pretty straightforward, right? So now let's go to select special data validation because we are trying to, I'm, I'm trying to finish this this bit of it in before 11 o'clock. So by 11 o'clock, we can go into formulas and functions, right? So now imagine you are given a data set, right? Very quickly. Um, and I'm going to be, I, I said there are multiple ways to do this, right? But because of time, I'll just be sticking to one way, just one way, right? So now imagine you have um, these data sets, for example, we have sales, for example, and when when they were inputting the values, right? Anytime sales was zero, I mean, was zero, instead of the person just put zero, the person left, left it blank. So what you now have is a series of blank sales everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, like, huh? why, why didn't you just put, why, why didn't you just put blank? I mean, put, put zero, right? And we want to change it. So what we do is that we highlight everything in sales, right? So I highlighted everything in sales. Please, please follow me, right? Right. And there's a there's a there's a function in Excel called go to special, right? And on that go to special, we can tell Excel to go to a particular set of data, right? For example, we can tell Excel to go to all formulas in this in this data set or all blank cells or all cells that are text all cells that are numbered, all cells that are, I mean, that have error in, in them, right? So to define it, you go to, now I'm going to be doing less of shortcuts, right? Or tell you more of shortcuts because shortcuts is what you can learn every time, right? But when you know where they are, it's, it's easier, right? So if you go to um, find and select, right? You see go to special. On that find and select, you see go to special. Find and select, go to special. Home. Find and select, go to special. Home, find and select, go to special. The, if you click on, so somebody hands up, please go ahead and meet your mechanical. Sorry, somebody's mic, mic is, um, I mean, somebody hands up, please. You can, you can go ahead, I'm, I'm with you. Mine doesn't show it, the odds, MN. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Somebody else is up. Okay, I think it's mine that's my, it's mine that's even up, sorry. <laughs> um, let me continue. I basically, put, oh, is it my hand that's up? All person hands up, yes, mine. Okay, sorry, pardon the, um, pardon the, I don't know for now. M moving on, right? So now, I said, what what we'll do here is to go to um our home tab, right? I mean, first I like the sales, right? Go to the home tab, go to find and select, go to go to special, right? I'll tell Excel, Excel, go to all the, we don't want constants, we don't want formulas, we want blank sales, right? So Excel, go to all the blank sales and click on OK. Right. What you notice that Excel has highlighted all the blank cells on that sales, right? So all the blank cells on that sales are highlighted. Now, what on Excel is that Excel, and let me see this blank cell, right? Just put zero, right? Right, put zero. Now, instead of putting, just instead of pressing only enter, right? Because we want to um, use this for multiple lines as opposed to just one line, multiple lines as opposed to just one line. What we press is control enter. Right. Instead of just enter, we press control enter. Right. So control enter will duplicate this zero across all the highlighted cells. Right. So if I press control enter, what we realize is that every highlighted cell, every highlighted blank cell is now filled with zero. Right. Do we all understand? Do we do we all understand? Yes, I do. Okay. Awesome. 
And please, so if you understand, please, by all means, just let us know, right? So we we know that. Um, I, I mean, I can always go back, right? I can always go back, right, and explain, right? In case you are, you are not. Sorry, I, I selected um the cells and went to go to special, but the zero only applied to one. Okay. The zero. The zero will apply to one. The zero will apply to one until you press until you press enter. Control, enter. I did that. It only applied to one. Okay. Try. Okay. Try. Okay. Okay. Let's start so again, after right? selecting, Let's start again, right? after clicking on blanks, it then selected all the blank cells, right? Yes. Yes. And then I clicked OK and then typed zero. No, no. Okay. No, no. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. That's the issue. That's so, the issue. So watch me. Let them watch me. Let them do it again. <laughs> So we go to, I said we highlight all the sales, right? We go to home, go to finance, and select, go to go to special. We click on blank. So we take Excel, go to all the blank sales, right? So now all the blanks are highlighted. I'm not pressing anything. I'm not pressing anything. The first one I will press is zero, right? Zero, right? That's first I'm pressing. I'm not pressing enter before zero, right? Pressing zero first, right? So even though zero is appearing in this area, in, in the active cell, right? So instead of pressing enter alone, I will not press control enter. Right, and it copies zero across board. Right. So now let's say we have uh, something. Let's say we have something. Oh, okay. Welcome. Let's say we have something similar, but this one is a bit different, and it's not it's, it's not as straightforward as, or it's straightforward actually, but it's not it's not the same complexity as the one I explained before. So now I don't know if if you, if you have this if you have this um if you've ever had this dilemma where you have someone is giving data right, and so we have three divisions in this company. We have game division. We have productivity division. And we have utility division, right? And instead of the person to um to say okay, everything here is game, the person just put game once, right? And tells you that uh, everything here is game, right? Instead of the person say productivity is from here, everything down here, right? Just the person just write productivity once because the person not to repeat itself and say everything like this down that down is productivity, right? The same thing with um the year, the, the date, right? So this this transaction was carried out first of January 2019. This one too was carried out first of January, first of January 2019. So instead of repeating it, it, it just it depends on what it wants, right? To show you that these two are the same thing, right? These two are the same thing, same date, right? So one way to do it, right, is basically what what, what we want to do is that we want to copy the cell B anywhere, anywhere there's a blank cell. We want to copy the cell above it. So, for example, this cell, right? We want to copy the cell above it because these two data are the same thing. This is a blank cell. We want to copy the game above it, right? So that's what we want to tell, tell Excel. So the first thing we do that again is to highlight the affected cells, right? So the first thing is to highlight the affected cells, right? Because you don't just do it randomly because there are many blank cells in the full sheets, right? We just we just highlight everything and that. That's not what we want, right? So we elect the affected cells and we go to go to special again. We'll go to special, right? And we'll go to blanks again, right? Blanks, right? I'll click on OK. But now there's a difference. We we don't want to type a particular value across board. We're, we're not just typing zero across board, right? Or we're, we're not just typing something across board. What we'll tell Excel is that Excel, anytime there's a blank, go to the pre the previous active cell, right? The most previous active cell and copy what is there, right? So Excel, enter the, enter the, anytime there is a, there is a blank cell, go to the previous active cell and copy it. So for example, now, I've not pressed okay, I've not pressed anything, I just did go to special blanks, right? And I entered the blanks for me. So what I'll press is equals to, so if you see here, this is my active cell here, equals to, right? So basically Excel, give me the equals to what is above it. Right, that means it goes to the preactive cell, right? It goes to what's above it. It goes to what's above it. Now, instead of pressing enter, I'll press control enter because I don't want to apply for only one cell. I want to apply for all the cells that I highlighted, right? So I press control enter. I want to realize that. See, now, everything that was blank here before, I've, they've all replicated the previous active cell. Same thing for year, same thing for year, everywhere, right? So everything is now everything is now highlighting the previous active cell. 
Hope you understand. Yes, thank you. Perfect, right? So another thing you must do anytime you are doing this is that once you have once you are done doing it, right? It's better, it's best, it's best, right? To copy and paste it special. Right. So for example, to copy it and paste it special, right? And to paste, I mean to paste as values, because if you notice, see, it's it's, it's showing as um it's showing as formulas, right? So for example, let's say I want to copy this date here. Yeah, this date is showing equal to C9. If I copy it here and I want to paste it somewhere else, let's say I want to paste it here, right? It's not it's, it's not giving me that date, it's, it's it's referencing something else. Do you understand? Because it is it is a formula, it's not a all these are formulas. They are not. They are not text, right? So one way to copy it and strip out the formula in it is to, like for example, I copy everything, Control C, right, and I press Control plus C. Oh, sorry. So I copy everything, and I press Alt ESV. So let me write it here. Alt plus E S plus V, all right? So if I want to strip out this, right? Strip out the other formulas that are here, right? Let's say I copy, because there are formulas in sales as well. So I copy it, Control C, so copy, then Alt E S V, I press Alt E S V. So it, it shows me paste special, right? So now I tell Excel, I want to paste this as values. That means I want to remove the formulas that are there. Just paste the values alone in the cell. Right, don't put the formula that is there. Remove all the formulas, just paste the value. And I click on OK, right? Right, OK. So Excel will remove. So if you notice now, this is no more, it's no more equals to anything. It's now game. Right? It's the national as game, right? This is no more showing that's equals to what's above it. It's now showing as that figure. Do you understand? Right. It helps you because sometimes you may do you may use a ghost special, right? And let's say you are doing other analysis because. But because you, you put equals to something, it may scatter everything, and you might not, you, you might not even know what's even cost the issue. Right? So it's, the rule of thumb is to actually copy and paste the special immediately after. Right? Uh, I will do one last one. Okay, can we if we can do two? Yeah, we'll do two. We'll do two before we go. Um, okay, let's do dynamic re I mean, naming. Right. So for example. Let's say we have um we have this uh, financial statement, right? Basic financial statement. Ag accounting knowledge is not needed in this, right? Just we have a basic financial statement here, right? And this is the P and L of this is the P and L of um P and L of um total wave, right? Hmm. Should I take this here? Should I take this here? Sorry, I will, I will skip this. I will take this when, when we are doing something else in formulas because I will, I, will, I will have to explain something first before I get to this. So as, as, I may as well just keep it in is in is is in entirety. But yes, what I want to show us here, yes, I think I'll just do this and we'll go to formulas. What I want to show us here is that, so as I said, Excel is named or cells are named roll Y, column, then roll, column, then roll. But you can give a particular name to a particular cell, right? You can give a, you can give another name in, in to um to a cell. For example, we have US, UK, Canada, rest of the world, right? We have their sales here. We have sales of 20, 20, 2012, 2013, right? You what we can do here is that where we have um this um. 2012 sales for US. We can see C5 here as name, right? You know, we can change this to US FY12, right? We can change it to anything. We can give it another name. Let's say we want to name it um, FY12 US. FY12 US. So I come here, type. So when I'm naming something, um, putting a name range in Excel, changing the name of, of, of a cell, the, the um, Except does not allow for space, right? So it must be one word together, right? And there's some other things that you cannot use some certain um, um, symbols, right? So let's say I name it F12 US, right? So now, if you notice, Excel is not seeing this again as C4, C5. It's seeing this as F12 US. So if I go somewhere else and I do equals to FYT, FY12 US, 
plus one, right? My formula is F Y two of U S plus one, right? So that's why sometimes you can you can build some formula. You see some funny 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 things there. Like ah, uh, where where is F Y two of U S? Like I can uh, I can F Y two of U S plus one give you the thing. It's because they've named a particular cell. So the cell is not written as D something or E something or something. It's not written as F twelve plus that. For example, now if I come here and I do equals to this plus this. That means I'm adding 2012 sales plus this, plus this, right? See, as I say, F, F, F12 US plus C6 plus C7 plus C8, he's seen it as F12 US. Do you understand? So the same way you can name a, a cell, the same way you can name a rule or a, a, a series of cells. For example, I've, 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 I've done this pre, pre today. So for example, if I highlight all the cells here, all the FY12 sales, if you notice what, what I called it was sales, sales F12. Sales F, F12. So instead of doing, so that means I can come here and name this range. I call, I call it sales F12. I come here and name this range. I call it sales F13. So in my, in my sum, I can do equals to sum. Instead of putting everything one by one, I can do equals to sum sales, sales F13. Right, so it sums it sums that series because I've named that series as sales thirteen, right? So Excel knows that okay, well, it's S thirteen. Do you understand, right? So this how this how you you um work around um the various um various name name uh name stuff in Excel, right? Name in Excel, and one way, one way to see, and, and it, it can be very confusing sometimes, right? Because you you just see some formula, you see equals to sales times this times. Like what is sales? What is this? Where is it coming from, right? One way to go is to go to that formula bar, formula tab, and name manager. The reason why I I, I showed it last time, formula tab, name manager. On that name manager, you can see all the different kind of names that that are active in this sheet. So for example, if you're looking if if you saw some of the formula, you saw sales 13. Uh, what was the sales 13? You can come here and say, I will show you, okay, this is, you, are, you are click on it, right? And it's okay, sales 13 is under, if you go to name range from C5 to C8, that's where sales 13 is, sales stuff is. You now say, oh, okay, uh, hey, I see, right? And you can you can also delete it from here totally and and the name the name will, will disappear. For example, let's say I want to remove that FY12 stuff I did before. I come and delete it from here, right? So Excel will not see it again as, as um, it's not seen that C five again. It's not. It's, it's not more seen that F, 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 F twelve sales that we called it before, or F F twelve US we called it before, right? It's not seen that C five, right? Do you understand any 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 question from this? Any question from this? Okay. No question from my end. Thank you very much. So moving forward. Yeah. So moving forward, please can you go back? To, okay, okay, I think I've, I've done that already. So moving forward, let's open the next document. Open formulas. Formulas in Excel. Formulas. The password is this on the screen. I'm putting in formulas, formulas. The password is what I'm typing in on the screen. It's on the screen as well, but I'm typing in the chat room as well. Let's open the Excel file formulas. Let's open the Excel file formulas in our screen. When you have that open, just say, I'm, I mean, just you can, you can tell me open or you can just um, open the chat room that is open. Formulas so we can begin. Yeah, and we we are we are just on time. Right, so we should be able to go about many more, many more formulas. And um, thank you, Ogotrux. Any other person? Any other person? In thank you to one more person. Formulas, tabs, Excel, O3. Thank you. So now I think. Uh, for the rest, 
topic. We'll, we'll just move on because of time. So let me share my screen. And, 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 and I hope you are actually learning. I hope it's actually useful for you. So before we start in formulas, right, I will just give some certain rules for Excel formulas, right? I mean, I'm going to skip some things, right? But basically, um, Excel, I'm going to type out some things here and I, I would like you to tell me what is, what's the difference between them. So, sorry. Sorry. Um, no, sorry. My name. Okay. So now, I, I, I would like to, I would like us to see something, right? And this will help us in formulas, and it's very important, please, because this is basically, I think, the make or break of formulas, right? Now, Excel, Excel sees. Excel sees or Excel reads in in um, in numbers ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. That's how Excel Excel reads, right? So all numbers, all numbers are formatted to the right. All numbers, for example, I typed four. If you type any number anywhere in your in your Excel sheets. You will notice that they are all automatically formatted to the right. So all numbers are formatted to the right, right? All letters are formatted to the left. So if you type Judith, for example, all all let all letters, right? All text, all text are formatted to the right, left. Numbers to the right by default. You can always change it, but by default, right? On Excel, right? All numbers to the right, all letters to the left. But there are two things that are different, and they are called Boolean, right? That is true and false. So no matter, like for example, if I write true in all, in this is true. I'm writing true, right? And you can try for yourself. If you write true in small letters and you put enter, it automatically it will capitalize it and put it in the center. If you type false. It doesn't matter if I put a small letter, it does not matter. Once you press enter, Excel sees, does not see true and false as, as um, letters. It sees it as Boolean, right? Because true in Excel is one. False in Excel is zero. So Excel sees true as one. Excel sees false as zero. So Excel does not see this true as a letter. It sees this true as a a number, a number letter, right? So we call it Boolean, right? For example, if 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 I didn't, I mean, to write X and a formula in Excel, use equals to sign. Before you start the formula, equals to like two plus one. That gives us three, right? Simple, right? So if I do equals to true, that means I I I just, I just put my arrow key here. True plus one, true plus one will give me two. True plus one. Will give me two because true true is actually seen as one. If I do the same thing, false plus one will give me one because Excel is seeing this false as zero. So it's like zero plus one is one. One plus one is two, right? Do you understand? It's very basic but very, very important. Next thing we understand is that in Excel, in Excel, right? Um if a formatting can change what you see in a cell, but it does not necessarily change what is in a cell. It's very important for, for formulas. And it's, I mean, I'm just just get us to, to understand this and we can fly with functions. Um, in Excel, right, a formatting can change what you see in a cell, but that will not necessarily change what's in a cell. For example, I will not explain what I'm doing, I will just do it, right? Then I will explain it, right? Um, because to explain, I have to do something, right? So now, for example, what you can see here is four boys, 
right? Four boys. You can see four four boys here. But what is in the, our formula bar is actually four. So I have formatted this for you to see four boys. But what Excel actually sees is four. So a formatting can change what you see in Excel, but does not change what is in Excel. In, in Excel, it may look like tongue, tongue twister, but it's very important. So anytime you are working with something, don't just look at what you are seeing in Excel because you can see anything. Look at what is actually in Excel because that's what Excel is going to work with. Because if I do, if I do four, four boys plus six, it gives me 10 boys, right? But if I do, if I come, um, if I come here and I do this Onyeka B, maybe it's one Onyeka. Let's say I put one Onyeka here, one Onyeka, right? Or let's, let's say I, I, I type the same thing again. One boy, yeah. If I do equals to one boy plus one, you give, you give me an error. Why? Because remember, I, I told you, it's very important. Excel format all letters to the left. Right, this is not formatted to the left, this is formatted to the right. That means Excel sees this as a number because what I did that, and, and if that permit, I will explain what I did. Is that as for, I, I changed the format, and in the format, you can see four boys, but these four boys is different from these four boys that is here because these four boys Excel is seen it as four boys, but here Excel is seen it as four, right? So it's here is four boys, here is four. But they are, they are different. So you can be seeing many things in Excel, but what is actually in Excel is what is actually here. Do you understand? In the formula bar, right? It's very, very, it's absolutely important, right? And the reason why Excel formatted this to the left is because Excel is not seeing this as a number. Remember, numbers are formatted to the right, letters are formatted to the left, and Boolean are formatted to where? Boolean are formatted to where? Anybody? Boolean are formatted to, the, to where? Anybody? Me do. Middle, awesome. Thank you very much. Now, another thing we must note is that because Excel only recognizes only recognizes um only recognizes numbers or that easily recognize numbers. If you are putting a for if you are putting a text a text in a formula, a text must be put a text or a symbol. You are putting a text or a symbol in a formula. The text must be in Double quotation, double quotation. So if you're putting a text or a symbol in Excel, it must be put in double quotation. For example, you can do two plus two, right? Because they are numbers. But if at all you want to add any text in your formula, right? And we're going to use concatenate as an example, right? It must be, it must always be, it must always be in double quotation, right? That's just a, a, a rule of thumb to note. The second, the second rule. So what I'm giving here is rules for formulas. Before I go into um, the the four kinds of referencing that we have, and we go into um, this thing. So try to do this in 15 minutes. So now in Excel, right? There, are there, are there, are, there, are, there are essential rules to note. People, people might not follow these rules. But that does not negate that the rules stand, right? And it helps you and helps your work and helps you know when you are making a mistake. For example, in Excel, generally speaking, generally speaking, you, you are not meant to write a constant or put a constant inside a formula. For example, if I'm doing 15 or 1,500 times 1 plus plus five percent all these things i'm putting it's not it's it's not proper excel right because it's not auditable like if if you want to take your work now and see this right one thousand plus he's supposed to be like what is what is one five what is one what is five percent i don't understand why are you confusing me like this right you're just confusing everybody right the best way to do it is for example let's say you have a service charge of one five Right, and the VAT of 20%, you want to add to the service charge, right? So let's say that's what you want to do. Most would do equals to one five, right? Um, multiplied by the one plus the service charge of 20%, right? This is correct, one eight, right? But X, the rule in Excel is that try your, your possible best not to put 
not to put a um, constant inside a formula unless the constants are like general constants. For example, months in a year, this and that, you can easily explain. If as even that, if if even those ones, as, as much as possible, just try and resist the urge to put constant in it, right? So instead of doing this, right, what I would do if I'm the one, the more the better, right? The number I'll put service charge, service charge 1500, VAT 20%. Then in my formula, instead of putting the numbers, I will not reference them. It will not be this multiplied by one plus this close bracket. So that if somebody comes to my formula and sees this, he can go to H6 and see what H6. H6 is service charge. Okay. And what's the other one? VAT, right? So now I, I understand the formula. And I don't, and I, don't have, I don't need to have you there beside me to understand what you did here, right? So doing a formula like this, you don't have, I mean, um, you don't have to be there for, let's say, your in charge or your manager to be there to be vetting for ah, what do you put one five here? What do you put this one here? Is basically go by himself and say, okay, it's X something and X something is service charge. Is this you grab? It makes it easier, right? And it also helps for change. For me, I can change to 30 percent here and you see the change 40 percent here. You can actually do it instead of going to the formula again and changing, 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 right? It makes it easier, especially if this. If this is linked to multiple things, right? I will just leave it there, right? But just know that it makes it makes this is the best way to 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 use um Excel form for um, for, um formulas. Next thing, next rule in Excel is that make sure that a make sure a formula is consistent for a range of cells. So, for example, let's say you are doing a particular thing from top to bottom. Don't have multiple 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 formulas, right? For example. Um, let's say we want to calculate the percentage change, right? Between January and February. And I mean, to calculate percentage change, it is new divided by old minus one. That's formula. So new, I mean, this is mathematics, but like new divided by old minus one, right? That's the, that's formula to calculate percentage change, right? So when you come here, right? I did new divided by old, right? Minus one, right? Sorry, new divided by old minus one. Mm. I should be able to drag this form function formula down. See, this form this formula works for one, two, three, four, but it does not work for this one, right? So most people, what they'll do here, they, they'll just delete this formula or type another formula here, or just type NA, not, a, not applicable. This this is bad Excel practice. Your formula should be consistent. That means that any formula you use from the beginning. You should be able to drag it down for a particular range of cell, cells. It should be the same thing. So what I would do is to introduce a form if a, a function called if error, right? But I'm gonna explain it now, right? If error can correct this thing, right? So if you notice there's a there's a function here, but it's not just blank. It is not just blank. There's a formula here. It's, it's formula that is from here. I copy it all the way down, right? That made this blank, right? And I will explain this much later. That's not the purpose of this the purpose of this is just to show us that um to show us the 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 usefulness of um the rules in excel now please this this next part is absolutely very critical absolutely critical right um once if we can get if on on understanding of this right this would be like the fastest class right because usually we spend like 30 minutes on this but i, I would like us to do it as short as possible referencing in excel so in excel right um, in Excel, there are one, two, three, four kinds of referencing in Excel, four kinds. The first kind of referencing, I will explain later, is absolute referencing. We have relative referencing. We have mixed referencing. And we have secular referencing. Out of, out of these four, this is bad. This, this one, secular referencing, you should, you should aim not to have it in your Excel. Right, but this theory, you are going to have it in Excel, right? And I and I will explain. So watch me very carefully. In fact, because of that, I'm going to use another example. I'm I'm, I'm going to use this what I have on my screen, right? Because I I I want to try and make it very straightforward for you, right? Very very easy for you. So please just work with me. So let's please just just I'm trying to just um uh. 
just I'm just trying to just cook up some data sets. Just watch me. This 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 is actually not necessary for what what I'm doing. Sorry, let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, my my Excel is hanging. Sorry, I have to close and open it again. Just give me a minute, please. Excel, Excel formulas. But I mean, I hope I hope, I I just hope you guys are learning something, Sha. I will learn. Yes, we are. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Yes, a lot. Thank. You. Thank you. Sorry, just trying to. My Excel was hanging, which is not meant to be, and. Trying to close it to open it again. Okay, sorry. Just a minute. I don't know my. Oof, sorry, I don't know why. Let me, okay. Yeah, so I think it should be better now. Yeah, so pardon the, okay. Now, if you can see my screen, let me know. We can see your screen. So let's assume I'm 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 trying to create a new data set, right? So this is Q1, it's Q2, Q3, Q4. Um, sorry. Um let's say this is for let me use people's name on the call. This is for Deborah. This for blessing. This for dummy, and this for Ebenezer. Now, um, just just work with me, right? Now, I I would like us to, I would like to teach us how to use. How to, I, I I said there are four kind of referencing. Don't forget absolute, relative, mixed and secular now imagine these are the scores of these four people right um or the sales the sales value for these four people right so in in, in the, the in quarter one the borrower made six thousand for this nine thousand hundred thousand six thousand that kind of thing let's assume that those are the salaries right for for the four quarters right now imagine what i want to do is to sum it right sum 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 is very simple right sum is equals to sum I want to see what what she got in the uh, by the end of the year. It's so sum everything, right? Sum and highlight everything. Sum equals to sum. I press and I highlight everything, right? So equals sum. I, I and and I if I put um sum, I highlight everything and I copy it down. For example, even what, what what I did here, I just came here. The I put my cursor key. There was a plus sign that appeared. I just press down. The formula just copied down, right? So this is total, right? Total, right? This total for for all of them, right? Now, um, if you notice, right, what I did, I did this. This is what you call a relative referencing, right? That means that, um, so for example, I did I did I did the form formula ones, right? Equals to sum this plus this. That is from f f twenty to um i twenty, right? So I just summed everything, right? Then when I copied and pasted this value here, what Excel did, I, I told you, very important, Excel thinks in a linear math manner. So what Excel did was that Excel just copied, just moved it because I moved down, Excel just moved the formula downward again, right? And did the same thing for the next um, rule. If I if I copied this again and I put it down, Excel just did the same thing again, right? So this is what you call real, um, relative referencing, right? So Excel just moving the formula relatively to the movements in your cell. Do you understand? So relative referencing is Excel moving it relative to 
relative to your movements in Excel. So if you're going from, um, it's almost like you're doing two plus four, um, or two plus one, three plus one, four plus one. Excel just doing it five plus one, six plus one. It's just doing it relatively, 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 right? So it's on, it's taking the pattern and doing it relatively. That we call relative referencing, right? And in relative referencing, you just you just put the formula simple like that, right? But relative referencing will not you will not use very Relative referencing every time. Now, let me explain. Now, imagine they ask you that, okay, do you know what? Let us get the, the percentage of their totals, right? That means this is this, this total here, right? I mean, this is like some total for all of them, right? So we say, what is what, what was Blessing's share of the total of total salaries? What was um, the broad share of total salaries, right? That's that's a simple in accounting. It goes, I mean, not in accounting, generally in mathematics. It goes to the total salary divided by total salary, Abby. The total salary by total salary, right? And let's say we want to put it in decimal point. So we'll go to home, yeah, decimal, right? So the total salary to every, everybody's salary is 28 percent. Ah, the best anywhere. That's nice. Okay, we, we, we want it for blessing. We want it for dummy. We want it for Ebenezer, right? Let's say we drag this formula down that we did here. What can we notice? Uh -uh, there's an error. Why is there an error? Why is that? Uh -uh, can't we just copy the formula down? And let's let's try and detect why what is an error. It's because that see what, what we want is that we want everything to be fixed to we want we want to see Deborah's salary over the total, Abby. Blessing over the total, dummy over the total. Ebenezer over total. We don't want the total to move. Do you understand? Right? That's what we want to do. We want to see the percent, the proportion of it, right? So that means that we want this, we want the total to be absolutely fixed. Do you understand? We want the other one can be moving, right? We want it that Deborah's salary over total salary, blessing over total salary, time over total salary, Ebenezer over total salary. Right. That means what in Excel, Excel, this G, J24, which is our total, J24, yeah, right? This J24, right? We want, we want this J24 in, in, in our formula. We want in Excel, Excel, even, even as they are moving the rest relatively, this J24, don't move it at all. Let it be absolutely fixed to this. Do you understand? Anybody? Yes, yes. Yes, and the way and the way to absolutely fix something, right, is by putting a dollar sign in front of both the roll number, I mean the roll number and the column letter. So if I want to fix this J J24, I put a dollar sign in front of J and dollar sign in front of 24. So I think I think Excel, Excel, don't let it move from this roll and don't let it move from this column. Don't let it move from roll. Roll row 24, do light move from roll column J, right? So we are putting a dollar sign in front of J and a dollar sign in front of 24. There's a the shortcut for it, but I want you I, I want you to understand this first before I tell you the the, the, the shortcut to put the formula. That's F4 basically. But but then Excel Excel, we want to absolutely fix this into J24. So if I like if I do this and I drag down now, what we realize is that you can see now it's now doing it properly. Blessing over total, dummy over total, and Ebenezer over total. Do we understand? Yes. Yes. Okay, one person understands. Who else will understand? Can somebody else understand? Can somebody understand? Can somebody understand? Can somebody understand? Awesome. Now, now that is for absolute referencing. Now, we have what we call mixed referencing. And under mixed referencing, we have two kinds of mixed referencing. We have roll constants and column constants, right? Mixed referencing. And, and let me explain with the use of an example as well, right? Now, imagine we have these our values, right? Now, let me copy this again. But this time, let me bring it here. Now, um, now instead of having Instead of having um um now this let's say we have sums for all of them as well, right? So now 
Oh no, maybe not. No, no, so. no. Instead of having um the total total number, yeah. I, I mean total total um the score of um Deborah and Co, right? What what I want to see here is I want to see the proportion of the bola salary to a total in, in Q1, right? So this is this all this, this is all Deborah, right? So I for Deborah, what I want to see is I want to see what proportion of Q1 salary was total salary, right? For example, um a Q1 salary, did it make 20% of our total salary? What was Q Q2 salary in, in terms of a total salary? What of Q what was Q3 salary in terms of, of, of our total salary? What was Q4 salary in terms of our, of our total salary? Basically, I want to see what proportion, what is the proportion of Deborah's quarterly salary to our total salary. So what I want to see is equals to Deborah's salary over our total salary for the year. So I want to see, so for Q1 and in percentages, right? For Q1, right? So what, what we're saying that in Q1, she made 23% of her total salary. So if I do this and I copy this across board to Q4, this is it's obviously wrong, right? It's obviously wrong, right? Why is it wrong? Because it's not it's not it's not referencing the total salary, right? The final total salary. So what 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 most people will do here is that they will not fix this, right? So they put the total side in front of it. They, 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 will, they will absolutely fix this, right? Like I, I told you guys, absolute referencing. So if I copy this and I move this here, right? It's more like it, right? Because this the, the total here will give me 100 percent Do you understand? Right? That means this is correct, right? But if I copy this formula and I put it down here, put this for the others, right? Will it, is it correct as well? Right? This is it's not correct because one way to know if it's correct is that the totals must give you 100 percent right? So I copy the formula. This is giving me something nine percent. This is giving me one nine percent. This is giving me something one percent. That means it's not correct because for Ebenezer, what he's doing is that he's doing Ebenezer salary is still referencing the borders total. Yeah, what he's doing is that he's doing dummy salary, but he's still referencing the borders total. Yeah, he's doing blessing salary, but he's still referencing the borders total, and that's not what we want. What we want is that as we move the formula down, right? It's also moving down as well. It's, also, it's, it's referencing blessings total. It's referencing damage total. It's referencing Ebenezer's total, right? I don't need to all reference only Deborah's total. So this way, this way, fixed references now comes into play, right? I mean, mixed references, sorry, right? I, I've talked to fixed references. So now, what about in Excel? So if in mixed in in mixed referencing, mi mixed referencing is saying that as as was implied, mixed that means one part is going to be relative, one part, one part is going to be fixed, right? It's going to be absolute, right? I, I've thought you what absolute is. I've thought you what relative is. Relative means just formula like that, right? So in mixed referencing, right, a part of the formula or a part of the, maybe the role or the column, maybe the, the um, one part will be fixed, one part will be relative, right? Now, in this our in this our function, what we want is that we want we want we want this 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 um total right right to remain in column H, right? I mean column J, right? That means the totals are not the totals are, are all in column J, but they are in different rows. They are in all all the totals are all in column J, right? Everybody, are, are we together? All the totals are in column J, yeah. right? But they are in different rows, so they're both in row 20, row 21, 22, 23. Although they're all in the same, does anybody have your hand up? Okay, see me, I don't know why my hand is always up. Um, even, even if the totals are all in column J, the rows are different. So we won't say, okay, for column J, what, what we want to lock is that we want to lock column J. So that means it should be fixed on column J, but it should be flexible on the rows. Fix the column, it should be fixed on column J because totals are not in K, are not in L, are not in M, are not in N. The, all the totals are in J, but they are in different rows. So what we come here is that we say dollar sign. I want the dollar sign to be to be fixed, to be in only one place. 
right? And it should be in, only in the column. So someone tell me, will dollar sign be on J or will it be on 20? In front of J on 20, which one? J. J, who else again? Somebody else? J, and they better tell me why. Okay, because... No, 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 no. I want somebody else. Since, since you told me J, that's fine. But someone else tell me why J or if you disagree with uh, what somebody said. Anybody? Because we want um because we want the J to be locked, and we want um the other rows to be flexible. That's why the um the last sign should be on G. Awesome, right? Please, does everybody understand? Or if you don't understand, just say I don't understand. Though, thank you, Onye, as well, right? So I believe everybody understands, right? Okay, yes. So, I don't understand, do. Uh -huh, please, please speak up, oh. Who else doesn't understand? That's 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 why I, I, I just don't just move forward because we're already 11 30 already and push my money good formulas. Right? As I described, we can do as many formulas as possible as you can, right? From 11 30 to maybe we, we push the bits, maybe 12 15, 12 30, right? Um, but 12 30 max will be done. Yeah. So basically, I said that in them, um, in them. Um, in the referencing, right? What we are doing is that for for this, right? We want to ensure that for both for blessing Dami and Ebenezer, the totals, right? At the moment, the totals are, are, are just fixed to Deborah's own, right? But what, what what we want to see is that even as we move the totals, even even as we move the formula down, the totals also move down, right? So we don't want the totals to be absolutely fixed to Deborah. We want the total to be fixed, right? But not absolutely fixed. That means that we want totals to remain in column G because the totals are all in column G, but there are multiple rows of a single column. There are multiple rows of a single column. So that means that the column is not changing, but the rows are changing, right? So when we get here, we say the rows are changing. So the rows should not be locked. The rows should be free, should be relative, but the column should be locked. The column is J. It's not living J. It's always in J, right? But the, but the um, rows can move from 20, 21, 22, right? So if we click on this, right, and we now copy this formula across board, what we see is that now it's more, it's, it's perfect because now everything is 100%, right? Because this is referencing correctly. This is saying Ebenezer's Q4 over total of Ebenezer. This is saying Dami's Q2 over total of Dami, right? Do you understand? So that's how referencing is. The next one I would like to show us is um, circular referencing, right? Circular referencing is, I mean, and this, this is what you should avoid in your, in your formula, basically. It's what you avoid in the formula. So let's say we have, um, let, let me go back to what I was doing in my referencing here. Let's say I'm calculating dummies, dummies um, total. Right, I mean, for blessing alone, let me delete this. Right, so blessing. So we have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, right? The total is, is equals to, so to get total is equals to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4, right? That's total, simple, right? But let's say I made a mistake. I did Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4, and I did plus, Total again plus total. So Q1 plus Q2 plus Q. I'm, I'm creating total. What I'm not in Excel is that Excel give me Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 plus total. Right? You see that there's, there's, there's a circular reference. It's like a chicken and egg situation. That means that to get total, I'm adding everything plus total itself. Right? So you can see it's, it's circular. It does not make sense. Right? So one way to check if you have circular reference in your in your work, right? Excel will show you. It make you open your Excel. If 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 a circular reference in anywhere, right? Excel will tell you, ah, there's a circular reference in here. But one one way to check where the, the circular reference is, especially when you have like a very large data set, right? And you you're not sure exactly where the error was, right? You should go to formula, right? On that formula, you see error checking. On that formula, yeah, where. 
where can I see my customer? You see error, error checking, and you see secular references, right? So it, it will point you to where the secular references is. You say it go to J, J20. So this is where the secular reference is J20. So if you if you audit it very well, you say ah, okay, ah, because I added J20 to it. So if I remove this J20 from it, right, and I come back to error checking, right? Error, sorry, error checking. I put drop down secular reference. You can see there's no secular reference in this document again, right? So it that helped me clear my secular reference. That's very um, straightforward, right? I hope we are together and I hope it's, it's pretty straightforward. So now let's open the third document that is there, the third Excel sheet that's there, Excel functions, Excel functions. And the password is what's uh, it's, 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 it's been displayed on the screen. Excel function. The password is being displayed on the screen and, and I've also put it in the chat room. Excel functions. Stabs Excel O2 and the name of the file is Excel functions. Thank you, Femi. If you have open, please let me know. Excel functions. I'm going to put the password again on the uh, on the um, chat room. Thank you. Two people have open. I want four people to have it open before we start. Okay, just two people. Who else have it open, please? Can we confirm that we have it open? Thank you, Judith. Okay, so. Before we go into that, right, I I would like to say that um, for Excel functions, there are there are in, uh, there are thousands, thousands. I mean, even as as we speak, there are more that are being created. Like they are created like on a daily basis. Like it's a lot. I mean, maybe not on a daily basis, but like they are being created frequently, right, or regularly. Right? So we have more Excel functions that come. Time, I mean, time in, time out, right? So it's impossible to, it's very overly impossible for, to cover, for example, let me share my screen. Let me show you something, self. So this is my, um, this is my Excel folder, right? And I have a list of 204 Excel functions that are here. So that's 204, if I selected, if I selected them, see, 204 selected, right? So I have about 204 Excel functions. It's impossible, and in fact, there are some are made because this if and and are together, right? I, I, so there are, there are a lot of Excel functions, right? It's impossible, it's very, it's highly impossible to say that you will learn all the Excel functions. It's not, it's not there, right? I mean, to learn all the Excel functions, I, 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 and, 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 and again, it, because it's, it's not everybody, um all the excel functions you will use on a day to day so what i've done is that for this class i've selected the major ones that um i believe will will, will be of help to you right that we use over and over and over and over again right and this this sets the precedence for you to learn more right more 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 of the excel functions right so i've just selected a, a few but i mean as I said earlier, I have a a a, um, a directory of two hundred and four functions, and from next month, beginning from next month, I'm going to be releasing short videos, about two two minute videos, three three minute videos, is explaining each of those two hundred functions, right, and how to go about it, right. It goes to be in bits and pieces. How to use how to use each, each of these functions, including the ones I'm teaching you today. So in case you forget. What I I'm, I'm teaching you today, you can always go back and just go and check that. Okay, okay, this function and everything, right? So you um, what I will ask is that you can subscribe to my YouTube channel so you will know when these functions are out. In fact, the recording of this session as well will also be there. So please, what you can do for me for this session, please, 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 you subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? You will see the videos from previous lessons, as yesterday, um. I mean, sorry, last week, last two weeks, the one I did last two years, VBA lesson, everything is all there, right? As some other inspiring content as well. But I mean, to be the first to know about when those um, series comes out, please make sure you subscribe. I've put the um, link to subscribe in the chat room. So now let's begin with Excel functions, right? Whew. Now, where should we start from? Where should we start from? Okay, let's start with something simple, right? And 
the most simple thing to start with is sum, right? That's very simple. That's the most simple, simple. It's very, very simple, right? And, I, and I'm going to have a price for this, right? The first person is complete. This, right? It's very simple. I will do one and then, um, yeah, I, I, I'll do number one. Do, 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 do you want to do number two, three, and four, right? So basically, this is this, these are the budgets for three, three ministries, right? Ministry of um, Education, Ministry of Health, and Ministry of Defense, right? Sorry. Yeah. Right. Ministry of Health, Ministry of Defense, and Ministry of um, of Education, right? So to sum, basically, is to press alt equals to, I'm going to alt plus equals to, alt plus equals to, it gives you the sum. So for example, if I select, highlight this, I want to sum up everything. I press alt equals to, Ula, right? I'm giving the sum of everything, right? So please, can we do the same thing for Ministry of Health, Ministry of Defense, and for consolidated budget? First, when to be done, just say I'm done. And 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 you will know if you are done because there's a check mark between each of them to show you whether you're correct or not. So please, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Would like to get. Okay, I got tricks is done. One person is done. Tommy C is done. Done. Sorry, who's that? Who's who's one said done now? So I was not looking at the participant chats at that time. Okay, who else is done? I need to, I need to, okay, Femi is done as well. All right, so we can move on. I'll just explain it. So basically, so basically, right, for so you just highlight everything and press alt equals to basically that's as simple as that, right? Alt equals to right, alt equals to gives you some right for consolidated budget, right? What about doing that? We're trying to consolidate everything, so we're we are consolidating the totals, right? So for mutual education, do equals to equals to the total of ministry of education here and press enter, right? For ministry of health, equals to total of ministry of health here and press enter. For ministry of defense, same thing, equals to the ministry of health of defense and press enter. Now there's a there's a there's a shortcut in Excel that helps you copy formulas from left to right. So in Excel, they will what we call left to right consistency. I will just bore you the details, but basically, right? There's a way you can move function, your form, form, formula from the left to the right, right? It's, and what, it's what you call control E, right? So if I do this, right? And I highlight everything, I just highlight everything here and I press control E. Oh, sorry, control R, sorry, pardon me. Control R, right? Because I will copy the formula from the left side to the right side. So it just copied everything from left to right, right? Control R. Copies formula on the left, the left mode part to across to the across the highlighted cells, right? The next one is summing, summing all with a single stroke. So basically, we, we want to sum for each quarter. I want to sum for, I mean, for each quarter, I would also we also to sum for each ministry, right? So I mean, do, there are many ways to do it, right? I said there are a million and one ways, but the easiest way, fastest way is to highlight everything. Watch me. For 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 if for even those that have done it before, highlight everything. Just highlight all the numbers and press Alt equals to. Excel is smart enough to know that that what you are doing, right? So I just with be just one single stroke of a button instead of doing this multiple times. Alt equals to Alt equals to Alt equals to Alt equals to. Just press Alt equals to once. Excel knows that man. I think that we want to do right, and Excel flash fuses for us. So that is very simple, very basic, right? So next one is if function. If function now. Excel gives us syntax for every function. Excel gives us syntax for every function, right? So the syntax is how to do the fun function. And um, if if is very important because what can master if, the syntax for if, most of the other things will be easier. Trust me, easier, easier. So for example, let's say we have this, right? So we have these students, Baba this show already found the good guy, Elio Mox, just have a look for the people who can go and lower it, These are their mathematics. These are their, their, the, 
the marks you got in mathematics. And there's a pass mark of 50%. So we want to tell X for if function, right? If equals to if. I'm, I'm, I'm typing it somewhere else, right? Because if. So if I click on tab, the if function, you will see it gives me three syntax. Logical test, comma, value if true, comma, value if false. So basically, to use, to use the if function, all you need to know is the logical test, what's the logical test, what's my value if true, what's my value if false. So the if, the if function is saying, for example, if I say, um, if, if this guy, first to, to do the if function, you must know the logical test. If this guy fails, right, that's the test. If this guy, or if this guy gets less than 50, then what should Excel give you if that statement is true? This. If not, give me this. Do you understand? Very simple word. If part of the good guy gets less than 50, that's the logical test, comma. If if it's less than 50, right, give me something. If not, give me something. That means either a pass or a fails. As simple as that. So let's do the same thing for fast the good guy. So say equals to if tab, logical test. Logical test is that if this guy, right, scores greater than or equals to, right, because the pass mark is 50. So is that greater than or equals to 50? So if it goes greater than or equals to 50, Right, that's what is here. Right, if it goes greater than or equal to fifty, give me. Let's say, if it gets greater than or equal to that, that means it passed. That be pass. Right. If not, that comma. If not, that value false. If not, give me fail. So is that a pass or a fail? If I press enter, Excel is giving me an error. Who can tell me why Excel is giving me an error? And I explained it in our formula, in our formula, um, in our form when we're doing formulas. Right. Why is Excel giving me an error when I did it correct? I mean, what, what I did was not typically wrong. Why did Excel give me an error? Um, because you didn't put the um, Z column now before the pass and fail. Yes. And um, across of yours. Yes. Double quotation now. Double remember, column. Double quotation. Yes. Remember, I said that if you are if you are typing a letter, a text in Excel. Excel will not just see the text. You must put it in inverted commas, right? Double, double inverted commas for Excel to see it. Excel will not see it. Excel will not read the text if there are no, there are no inverted commas. For example, now, I said, if, if you get an, if you get an, um, get an equal to 50, give me pass. If you write pass like that, Excel will not see it. So I have to put the top quotation mark in front and behind pass. So it's only now Excel will see that okay, this is what you mean. For fail to the same thing, fail is a text, right? It's a text, text, right? So if I press enter now, see Excel is seeing it now because I have put double quotation in front of the pass and the fail. Do you understand? Choose forward. Now, if I drag this formula down, right? This is is is, is it correct? It's wrong because Apostolori raw got 48. And is, is it showing pass? But the pass back is 50. Ah, okay. We have seen our error. What's our error? Who can tell us what, who can tell us what our, error, our error is? What we're using now is we're using everything we have learned in the formula. For example, now, what's our error? Why is Lori Raw, about Lori Raw getting pass even though it got 48? Who can tell me why? Because it's not locked. So he's just moving down, like he's not reference, something like that. Perfect, right? So because I did not, I did not lock the pass mark because the pass mark is not meant to change. The pass mark is not changing because, like, if, because if, 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 for example, now if if I see, see, Excel is seen as a relative referencing, so Excel is moving it down relatively, 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 relatively as it's, as as I'm moving my formula down. But I said, okay, Excel, this pass mark, I don't, I don't want you to move the pass mark relatively. I want the pass mark to be absolute. Right, so I want to put my F four um, both in the roll and the column, right? Roll and column, and I drag, and I drag down. What I realize is that now it's correct. Do you understand? Now it's correct. So for if e function, if e function will just help you between one logical test to if this guy gets 
if the guy gets greater than this, give me pass. If not, give me fail. One logical test. One logical test. But there's, I mean, therefore, so what makes you master Excel is your ability to use or combine multiple formulas into one, right? Or know how to use, let's say, um, its number and search function together, index and match together, VLOOKUP, if we wrote together, how to use multiple functions, right, together. That's, that's where the complexity comes in, right? Excel on its own is very simple, right? It's basically it's very, very simple. It's just knowing how to use multiple formulas together, right? I, I know which formula to even use, right? Right. That will help you save time, right? For example, I can use another formula for this, right? But I will, I will, I will bore you. I will, I will not. I will save you that, um, that stress, right? So basically, I said that multiple ways to do multiple things in Excel. That's that way, you know, right? So now, let's say we want to use, um, hmm, let's use sum and if together. Now, sum, I mean, okay, sum if is one function actually, right? But let's say we want to use if and if and together, if and, if and. So let me see, what should we use if and? Okay, so now we have, let's see our pass mark is 50 as well. Pass mark is 50. And um, you can either fail, if you get, if you get less than, if you get less than 50, you will fail. If you get greater than or equals to 50, you will pass. Right. Now, listen. Now, okay, pass mark for, okay, pass mark for, let's say pass mark for maths. Okay, ma mathematics pass mark is 50. And let's say the pass mark for English is, is, um, 40 or something. Yeah, part of it is 40. So, and I'm changing this to 40 as well. Now, I changed it to 41, actually. Now, before we did something very simple. If the if this one, again, this one, give me through. If, if not, give me false. Very simple, very, very simple. So four points. But now, we want to merge two functions together. If function and and function. So now, Imagine they say for for somebody to pass, right? You must you must you must you must not you must not just pass only mathematics. So you must pass mathematics and English. So if you feel if if like get 100 100 100 percent in mathematics, if you fail English, or let us say pass mark is 50 50 actually, right? If 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 fail English, even though you get 100 percent in mathematics, you are failed. For example, let's say they get they get 100 in mathematics and 45 in English, right? So if if if, if like get 100 in mathematics, like um, in Nigeria, uh, post uh, why can we pass mathematics and English, right? So the part of mathematics and English is above 50, right? And so we come here and say equals to if, if we use if, right? We're gonna like, give one logical test. That means we're gonna like, say if, if mathematics is greater than 50, Give me this. But we want to use both mathematics and English, right? We want to use more than one logical test. So we introduce another fun function again. Each of it is only if we use if, they will not put and. So I think two. So it helps, it helps. So if you can see and function checks whether all arguments are true. So it, it, it helps for multiple arguments, right? So if I put and, so what you can see here is logical test one. Logical test too, so you can go. You can you can keep, you can keep on adding more logical tests, right? So add function helps you to um, use more than one logical test. Why e function is only for one logical test? So now by using the e function and the and function, I'm able to use more than one logical test. So what the first logical test is mathematics. That means if you, the first one is your mathematics, right? If you get greater than or equals to 50, right? 50 is here, right? And remember, we're going to we're going to um 
lock it absolutely because we don't need, we don't need to move. So that's the first one, right? That means if you get greater than or equal to in mass, greater than or equal to in math, and greater than or equal to 50 in mathematics, comma, he said us what is the second logical test. The second one is for English, the same thing. And you get if you get this if, if you get greater than or equal to 50 in mathematics, and you get greater than or equal to 50. Remember, for uh, greater than or equal to 50, right? Sorry. Great, greater than or equals to 50, right? 50 that year. Remember, we will lock it, we'll absolutely lock it again as well, right? 50. Greater than, greater than or equals to 50 in English, right? Now, it's actually us, do you have a third logical test, right? We don't have any third, we don't have any, um, Sorry, uh, oh, this. We don't have any third logical test, right? We, 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 we only have two logical tests, right? So instead of pressing comma, we can press, we can, we can close the brackets. If you close the bracket, you can see the AND function has finished. Now we are back into our IF function. So we have, we have, we have used the AND function to circumvent the IF function. So instead of, in, instead of being able to put only one, one, um, function, I mean, one logical test, because of the AND function, we were able to put two logical tests, right? Then we press equals two. So what is the value if it's, if it's true, right? That means if if I get greater than 50, both in math and English, will I pass? Yes, I will pass. So I can come in and highlight pass, because I don't want to type pass again. I want to just highlight pass, right? Highlight pass, and I will fix pass as well. If not, I will fail. I'll be, instead of typing fail, I want to just highlight it here, right? And I press and I put and I lock it as well. And I press enter, right? What will happen is that see, it has it has properly given me that even if I get hundred in mathematics, as long as I fail English, I will fail. Right? Do you understand? Any question? I know, I know it's not as straightforward, but trust me, the more the more you you practice and practice and practice, you will you, you get familiar with it, right? Is it is it is it straightforward for anybody, or do you understand yes, it? Sir. Okay, one person understands it. Another person understands it. Anybody understands it? Not so straightforward, but understood. Understood. Okay. Yes. yes. I think I think with with I don't give myself to it. You will you 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 be you be start. It's very very straightforward. Fine. So let's do something simple now. This one is very simple. So let's do. Let's do something simple. Count, right? Basically, you're just counting. So equals to count, right? Count function just count. So there are different kind of count. There's count A, there's there's count, there's count all, right? There's count blank, there's count if, there's count if. There are different kind of count, but I'll just stick on count. So count, count, what a count does, I mean, what a count do? Count just counts the number of cells in the range, right? So example, I want to say, say count, right? So let's say we want to count how many cells are here. From year to year, right? Count everything here, right? Oh, the 13, 13 values, basically. That's it's simple, right? So we can also do count if and I think I'll I think that I'll just I'll, I'll just stop here. I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, under the count function, I'll just stop here because you can do multiple things, right? And count. So let's say we want to count if. So count, so basically we're using count and if together, but Excel has Excel has done it in the way that you have to use two of them together, Excel has made them together for you. So count. Count if let's say you want to do count if so now the range and criteria range and criteria basically range and criteria so let's say it's cause the mass so let's say we want to, we want to count if if um count all the scores that are greater than 50 right so we come here it's just it says that all the scores in mathematics they are greater than 50 so i come here it says it says what is the range this is the range Abby. this is the range mathematics range the comma what is criteria? Criteria is greater than 50. So count everything that's in this range that greater than 50. Right? So sorry. Count count everything in this range that is greater than or equals to 50. Sorry, 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 sorry. What's the issue? What's the issue? Sorry, let me let me put it in a separate box here. Equals two fifty. So now, so 
I'm, I'm telling Excel to count everything that's greater than or equals to 50. Let me see. Yeah, so Excel wanted me to put it in double quotation because there was a symbol there, right? So what uh, Excel, Excel, count everything that is greater than or equals to 50, right? So it, yeah, it counted all, every, all the numbers that are greater than or equals to 50. I told me that it's right. So now I, I like to do the same thing for biology. How many, how many numbers are less than 60? How many numbers in biology or how many scores in biology are less than 60? Let's do, let's do, let's do, let's, let's try. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. It goes to count if the range, then the criteria will be in quotation mark because of, because of the symbol. Bless me. So we want to count how many, how many, I mean, what's the number of people that got less than 60 in biology? Less than 60. Let's try, let's try. If, if you are done, just say I'm done. Okay, Femi is done. Who else again? Who else again? Who else again? Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We learn by trial, we learn by practice, we learn, we learn, we learn, we learn. If you are just listening to it, it will look nice. It will, it will seem like you understand it until you do it. Trust me. I mean, many Excel class, I mean, many Excel classes or many um, stuff of similar nature. And I thought I knew it until I went and practiced on my own. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know this. No. Right. So that's why it's good to practice. So please. Who else again? Only for me. Uh -uh, it cannot be only for me. What is the total number of students that got less than 60 in biology? Ah, guys. I know nobody's asking me again. Nobody I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, I mean, do they want to answer me? I'm like, how many people got how many people got um less than 60 in biology? Count how many people got less than 60 in biology. Tomisi has also responded. Oh, Tomisi has responded. Oh, sorry, I didn't okay. Tomisi, okay, one more person, one more person, one more person, one more person. Just three. If I have three, I think I'll be fine and we can move on because we have quite a lot to cover. And we, and we need to be out of here by 12.30 max. Any other person? Any other person? Judith, um, Bolaho, Grace, or Gotchuks? Um, who else again? It's called Damilola, Justina, Onye, Tuchuku. Blessing. Anybody else? Okay. In the lack of nobody, I will just move on. Right. So basically it's the same thing, right? I can just literally just copy this, paste it here, but change this to 60. Right. And yep. Yeah, size five. Oh, sorry, less than 60. Sorry, that's what I said. I said less than 60. I think that I said so it's yep. So that's that's that, right? The next thing we we'll, we we'll, we like to look at is VLOOKUP, right? Um, we do VLOOKUP, then we go to some other smaller, smaller, smaller functions, right? Now, for VLOOKUP, oh, VLOOKUP. Hi, sorry, I got four, so I'm wondering why mine is different. Sorry, in, in sorry, count in, if. In count if. Yes, count if. So what were you Numbers what that are greater than 50, I got like okay. 60, oh, sorry, oh, oh. I got four. Oh, okay, so so, oh, okay, we, so, so we, we did less than we did 60. less than sixty. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if if you get okay. at sixty, you get... it's four. Yes, sorry, correct. If you get at, if you get at sixty, it's, it's so you just so you just what you used. So for for VLOOKUP, right? In in uh, under VLOOKUP, what we what we do is that we. Imagine we have like a large set of data, like a large array of data that we have, right? And we want to get 
we want to highlight or get some certain things from each of them. For example, now we have this data that has um, oh oh only okay yes yes because you're using greater than sixty, right? So greater than six will give you four. We we were using less than sixty. That will give them eight. That's why we need we need to. So now for um for VLOOKUP, right? Imagine we have a large data set, and for this class, I will I will use instead of using this, I'm going to use our. Let's move to the ending. I think there's a VLOOKUP um activity that we have. So yes, okay. It's a, it is a VLOOKUP. Okay, yes, it's a VLOOKUP activity. Now, so. From this activity, activity one, I mean, act, master did that too, right? So now let's 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 do it together, right? So let's nah, okay. So now we have just imagine this is a logistic company, right? Please follow me, right? I want to use like a real life example because this is actually a real life example, right? I just change the names and make sure that you, you don't know. But this is a real life example, right? These are different um uh trips right trips id right so different so every every time let's say a rider is going out right it picks up from it picks up from a location it picks up from a papa it delivers in goose right this is the expense he made right expenses right this will be number and this is the revenue he made right so this is the revenue and this is the expense and this is the trip id so imagine they give you a data with series of Series of trip IDs, right? Series of trip, trip IDs, right? And I said, okay, for this series of trip IDs, right? What is the net payout? Net payout basically is the um, revenue minus cost, basically, right? That is revenue minus expense, right? So we can we can as well change this this to um, revenue minus expense, right? right? That's next payout, right? Revenue minus expense. So for this trip IDs, want to get the access class. What what was revenue and what was the expense, right? Then this will automatically create itself net net payout and give us if give us what we're looking for, right? So it will be fooled out to come here and say, oh, trip ID will come here again, will come here. I want trip ID. Will I look for it again? Oh, come on! It's it's so not it's so not um it's so not um if efficient, right? So what we use is what we call VLOOKUP. Vertical lookup. So a V lookup comes and so but for you to do a V lookup, the first thing that you must know is that in, in your V lookup, right, the table, what you're looking up, right? That is so in V lookup, you look you look V lookup takes a unique identifier. For example, this is a unique identifier. A unique identifier is what is not so the trip ID is unique to itself, right? Like for example, this pickup location. There are many, so it's not unique. So you cannot easily want to get a unique, a unique um, expense and revenue. But this trip ID, the, the months are not unique because this generally, in fact, everything generates within nineteen self, right? So, but this trip ID are unique, right? So that means for every trip you make, you get a unique identification. So your local value must be number one, must be unique. Number two, your anything that anything that your unit at your local value must begin the the, the the table we are looking at. For example, we are looking up, we are looking, we are, we are looking for this chip ID in this table here, right? So it's essential that this chip ID must be the leftmost leftmost part of the table. That means this chip ID now, if I didn't if I didn't really look up, this chip ID cannot be here. The chip ID must be in the leftmost part of the table, right? The leftmost part of the table. That's the second second thing to note in the VLOOKUP. The first one, the, the the lookup value must be a unique identifier. That means you must be able to use that to unique, uniquely identify various things. N number two is that your your unique your lookup value, right, must be in the leftmost part of the table. Now let's begin. So we want to get the asset class for trip ID. Two seven seven four. What we do is equals to VLOOKUP. Now VLOOKUP gives us a 
a, a syntax. How to do it? So it says, what is the look of value? That means what is the unique identifier? What are you looking for? We're looking for six seven seven four. So we've highlighted it. Then we we'll press comma, comma. Excel saying, okay, what is the table? I should look for this six seven seven four in. So what table am I looking for? This six seven seven four. What table? So the table is master data two. Yeah. So Excel, this is the table here. From here, everywhere here, right? This table they were looking for. Right. But be careful. Be careful. What I've done here is a big mistake, right? Because I I, I purposefully made the. I purposefully did this so you two guys will, will will have errors, right? If because see, what to select my table, I came here, right? I went down and I went like this, right? And I said, This is my table, right? But if you go down, you realize that see, just because I put a space here, the my Excel did not immediately capture the other part. See, there are a lot of data that is not is not captured. Right. So most times in Excel, so, I mean in, in our in our analysis, right? The issues in our VLOOKUP really might, might just be that we do not capture everything, but we do not know because there's a blank cell, there's just one blank cell. You make a blank cell, it just shows Excel will just only act, capture just the first active cells, it will just leave the other ones down, right? And your mind I've captured everything. I'm like, I want to make it an error. The reason why I get an error is because you don't capture everything. Right? So generally, there are two, there are two ways, I mean there are three ways to avoid this error. The first way is that you make sure that you check everything. You check, make sure that like that next the next thing you're seeing is blank, right? Okay, it's blank. So I go up, right? So you make sure you capture everything, right? That's one way. The second way is that you instead of capturing the data, you can just capture the column. So you, you as as asking us for the table, Abby. Say the table is from table A from column A to column H. So everything A to H, it captures everything. So that that's a, sec a, a second way. You have to have been able to ensure that every data is captured, right? And I will teach you the third way. And for the third way, I have to leave this uh, formula. So the third way, and I explained to you in the very first um, lecture, is by coming here, coming here, coming to all the table, right? So come here, you highlight all the table, right? And you give a table a name, right? So you come here and give a table a name. So the, table, the name I'm giving this table is, um, let's say I'm calling it um, Excel tab, um, tab 1. Let, let's say that that's the table name I'm giving, it, Excel tab 1. So if I highlight everything, see, I like everything, it gives C, name Excel tab 1. So if, I, if, if I'm coming here and I'm doing equals to, if we look up, Excel actually my lookup, Table and um, value. My lookup value is six seven seven four, comma. What my lookup table? Table array, right? Instead of going to that place, I will just type Excel tab one, and it automatically highlights that table, right? So instead of me going back there, it, it automatically highlights table. And what this thing helps me, it also helps me in formatting. I mean, in the referencing, because you know, if I'm if I'm putting a table and I don't fix it, right? If I'm going down, Excel will be moving the table down, 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 down. But if I just name the table, right? The table, the name will not change, right? It's that table, it's fixed there. And, I, and, and I'm sure that it captures everything. But so for this example, I will, I will stick with the naming table, right? So now I've named the table Excel tab one, comma. What is the column index number? Now, for, for column index number, what Excel action was that now, what do, you, what do you want to find? I say, I want to find asset class. Control A. Control A is the shortcut to alert, alert, alert the table. So, um, but Control A, you have to be sure again, because Control A will highlight the active sales. Now, Excel is asking us, what is the column index number? So what do we want to find? We want to find asset class, Abby. So when we come to asset class, asset class, right? Where is asset class? What what number? Sorry, what number is asset class? Right. So this is what column number is asset class? This is column one. This is column two. This is column three. This is column four. This is column five. This is column six. This is column seven. This is column eight. So asset class is in column eight, right? 
asset class is the column eight. So it's asking us what is the column index number of what we are looking for, right? What we are looking for is asset class, right? So what we just put is eight because asset class is in eight. If we're looking for something else, let's say revenue, we don't put eight, we put maybe four because revenue is in four. If you're looking for express, we don't put four because express is not in four. Express, we, we, we count the column. Column, so it's the column index number. So what's what is the index of that? What we are looking for? What we're looking for is asset class and asset class in eight, right? Then the next one press comma, right? There's another question. Thank you, King. Okay. Now we'll press comma. So now it's telling us what alpha column index number is saying range, range, I mean range lookup, right? And for range lookup, you see two things. You see true and false. True is approximate match. False is exact match. True is approximate mass, um, match. Um, false is exact, uh, exact match. Basically, if we want to get, if we want to get the um, exact match, that means it's just asking us when we go and look at this table, if we see 6774, is that what you're looking for exactly? Or if we see something that's close to, let's say we see 6774.1. She will also call it 6774, right? So do you want exact match or do you want approximate match? For almost 100% of the time, what we we'll use is exact match. So we're looking for, actually look for 6774 exactly. Don't, don't, don't look for anything approximately. Look for 6774. So we look for, people click on false, right? And we'll now close it. So if you press enter, right? Excel has told us that 6774 is a 15-ton covered asset class so we can verify if you come here right and i just find 6774 right see 6774 is under 12 tons covered 15 tons covered sorry right so that's what we have here right do we understand this do you understand please i, I would like our feedback please I would like our, it's very it's very serious. yes yes Femi, yes who else yes who else is yes who else is yes, please? Who else is yes, please? Yes, yes. Gano is yes as well. Okay. So now. Yes. I'm I'll, getting I'll, NA. You're getting NA for what? NA for what, sorry? As my answer. Ah. Okay. Then let's do, let's do for for you and for um um when you let's do revenue together, right? Do you also really understand? Can you also can you can can you drag it down, do revenue and do expense as well? If you understand what I'm saying, right? But but for those that don't understand, I will do revenue and expense together. So I said equals to for for those of you who understand, please complete the table, complete the table, right? And tell me your total answer. Yeah, tell me your total net payout. For those of you who understand, for, for those for those that not, do not understand, let's continue. Let's do it together, right? Um, yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, I've got to it now. Thanks. Okay, also, so, but 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 when you let's let's look at that, and, and for any, any anybody that's on the call, I did not understand that, I did not talking, right? So we want to get basically we want to get the revenue for this six seven seven four, right? We want to get the expense for this six seven seven four, right? So and we have we have our table here. We we have our table. What we what we first did here, what are we? We this is our table. We make sure that we covered everything in our table, right? Everything in our table. And we came here and we nailed our table Excel tab one. So that every time Excel asks us what our table is, instead of coming to highlight the table again, we just say Excel, Excel tab one is our table. So we have, we have named our table, right? So we came here and we're not equals to VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP is saying, what is the lookup value? What are, what am I looking for? We're looking for 6774. And I seen that we're looking for in, in, in what table? In what table am I looking for 6774? Because we already named our table Excel tab one. We just say in Excel tab one. He said, okay, no, no problem. I understand the short guy. Comma. Column index number means that okay, in, in, in this table, what column? What column am I? What column? What column am I looking at to bring the value from? So for example, we, we want to we want to bring the revenue of 6774. So we say, what is the column number of revenue in that table? So we come here, right? We come here and we count. Where's revenue? Revenue is in G. So the, if this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven. Revenue is in seven, 
right? So what, what we want to put here is column index number, right? So all these things, we will we'll delete it. What we want is just the column index number, right? Column index number is seven. That's where the revenue is. Revenue is in seven, right? Um, Express is in five. I mean, for what we just saw the revenue is in seven, comma. Now, it's in the range lookup. So Excel is asking us, do we want exact match or approximate match? That means if I go to six, if, if I go to that table, right? If I don't see 6774, if I see 6774.1 or anything that looks approximately close to it, will I, should I still classify it as 6774? And the answer is no, we want exact match. So we, we click on false, because what we want the exact match and we click on enter, right? And if we now drag it down, we can see that it populates everything, right? The same thing for, for um, expense. What we can do is, because if you look up the same thing, we can couple this formula here, we call the formula here, here, right? And we paste the formula here, right? I'm not, I'm not dragging the formula, I'm copying the formula, right? And we come and say expense. Expense is in what is in one column. One, two, three, four, five. So I, I can just come here and change this from seven to five. And I'll get my expense. And if I drag it down, I get my answer, right? So who, who has gotten what the total net payout is? Anybody? How come I'm, how come our value is NA? If yeah, I, if because I, we don't have some of those figures, some of those sure? look of value. Sure? Are you sure? I searched for the first one there, 6740 is not in the master data. Uh -huh. Are you sure? Who else again? Who else? Are you sure? That's one 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 person's school of thoughts. <laughs> Who else? Why are we not getting our why are we getting two errors here? We're getting error here. And we're getting error here. There's no six error four zero and it's zero one nine. That's okay. That's semi. Who else again? Onye, Tommy Singh, Bolao. I I I think I've gotten it. Why are we getting error? I will get an error. We have about 10 minutes left to go. I like to cover like two more things for we before we do that. Anybody else? Okay, straight forward. The answer is simple. This is why we're getting errors here in some of this one is because these numbers are not there at all. <laughs> this 6740, if you check 6740, come here and check for it here. As Bala said, you will not find it, right? It's not fine and it's deliberate, right? I did not put these two numbers there because I would like us to use another formula, right? So I, I've thought to look up. How do you look up generally? But now I want to teach you how to use another formula called if error, right? Adding if error to your formula. And if error can be used with multiple formulas. But I'm, I'm, always, I'm, I'm, always, I'm always very weary of using if error, right? I, I, I only use if error when I'm very sure that there's an error, right? So if error means, it's, it's telling that, so... Oh, but then Excel, Excel, if there's an error in this formula, put this particular value. So that means if I've, like now, I've, I've done this thing, and it, to me it's correct, right? But then Excel, Excel, if there's an error somewhere in, in any of this formula, I mean, in, in this formula, put a particular value. For example, we have done this in our VLOOKUP, and it's okay, we're okay with it. We, are, we, know, we, we know we are correct, right, in our, in our, in our VLOOKUP. But because there are errors, because of this, this six 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 seven four zero and this um eight zero one nine is you know it's not in our initial data set. It's giving us error because Excel is not finding it there. So there's nothing to bring, right? To populate. So tell Excel come here in front of our of our VLOOKUP or in front of any 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 Excel um formula. We we'll come and type if error. So but tell Excel if 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 error if error if this value give us error. We come and put a comma here, give us zero. That means if everything, if this formula that we did here, give us error, give, give me zero. I will type, okay. We, we do the same thing for this revenue. If error, if this error, if this, if this VLOOKUP give us error, give me zero. And I close my bracket. Same thing for this expense. I come from the VLOOKUP. If error, if this, if this formula give me error, comma, put me, give me zero here. Yeah. Right. Then now I will not drag my formula down again. I drag it down for asset class. I drag it down for revenue. I drag it down for um, expense. 
and now I can see my total is minus um minus one hundred um four nine one right as straightforward as that right so because our time is almost up almost up almost up I'll just do and hmm what will I do 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 let me do concatenate and um yeah concatenate so now imagine imagine just like I taught you text to column right so now imagine we have different names and want to add them together instead instead of separating them want to add them together right what what we can use is the upper sand upper sand is this and the and upper sand symbol the and symbol is called upper sand right so what well, basically I, I, want to, yeah, I, I have the first name i have the last name right i want to put it into one i have tenny first name son name makanaki first name ozumba son name umbandiwi i want to add them together into one right what i would do is equals to i to start the formula I put equals to equals to tenny right imagine i want to put the full name together instead of first name and second name tenny and then i put the and sign the and sign and makanaki and i press enter and i put them together but what there's, there's, there's an issue here what i want is tenny space makanaki I don't, I don't want just tenny makanaki together. I want tenny space makanaki. So first name, space, son name, right? So what I will do is first name, space, and so it's first name. Ooh, sorry, first name and space, son name, right? So I want first name, space, son name, right? So I put first name and I put a space and I put son name. But remember, I said if once you put a symbol. Or put the text in the formula you put it in double quotation mark so i put my space in between double quotation mark so it's is tenny and space and the son name when i press enter you can see there's a space now and if i drag it down you can see that i've i've i've, I've literally completed it right from tenny makanaki right and just just as i said there are multiple ways you know if, if i come here and i and i just type tenny makanaki right and I press Control E. Yeah, he actually does the same thing as well, right? So as I said in Excel, there are multiple ways to do multiple things, right? I will just do two more things, um, trim, and I will do ChatGPT, and I will close because it's twelve thirty, right? And don't don't forget, right? One thing that really helped me, that really have really helped me, is if you um you all go to um the YouTube channel, the I'm going to take um each of these functions one by one by one and i'm going to put it there so make sure you subscribe right and also what i like to beg us before i do the last two things i have to do is that yes pivot can we also do pivot table oh, okay i will I'll, I'll, I'll quickly rush into i mean true pivot table just give a high level overview of your table i was going to get feedback from this session please so please if after this session you can just give me a quick feedback i will be overjoyed as well and i've put the link for both of them in the chat box so let me just do pivot table then and i will do chat gpt on close now for example so a pivot table can help you like set or further analyze data so what we have here is that we have large amount of data like a data set is so large right and um let's say we want to get a um um sorry Let's say we want to get a, we want to further analyze this data, right? It, a pivot table helps us to further analyze data, right? And to get pivot table, right, is to, is to first highlight all the data, your data set. So I press Control A to highlight my data set, Control A. I, I've highlighted all my data sets, right? And I go to data, right? So I, the, 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 I mean, sorry, insert, sorry. The first thing you do is to highlight your data, I come to insert, and I come to insert data, I mean, pivot table pivot table pivot table let me know how to pronounce it pivot table right and i click on pivot table right and it tells us do do i want to put this in a new in a new worksheet or, or an existing worksheet let's say i want to put it in an existing i mean in in a in this in, in this same worksheet or I can put it in some, some somewhere separate let's say in, in a new worksheet for example so what happened that it brings my pivot table in a new worksheet right and a, a pivot, I mean, with the pivot table, you can do, you can do or not do, right? You can just play, you can play around with it, right? Um, 
I will just do some basic things and even teach you some complex things as well, right? I mean, some fancy things, right? No, even no complex, fancy things. So for example, um, the, the, this is my pivot table data and this is where my pivot table is, right? So for example, let's say I want to see, I want to see everything produced by this, pro by a particular producer, right? For example, um, let's say I put my producer, it's, 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 like, it's like drag and drop, right? So I put all my producers in my column, right? So the producers, let's say I put my producers in my rows. So see, all the producers I have are in rows here, yeah, and all the rows. So I want to see producers, um, the volumes that each producer is, is bringing, right? And I put values as volumes. So it counts, it counts it, right? But what I want is not count, I want, I want to see the sum. Right. So basically, what he's doing here is that he's counting how many how many times there's there, there's a producer um, by Aqua, how many times there's a producer by by name um, Bayer. But if if I want to see the volume in terms of the the sum, I can see it as well. Right. The same thing for um, let's say so. Let's say I I, I, I want to see total total amount of volume that this Aqua guy is giving me. Right. And I come here and I right click. Right. And I come to summarize value by, right? So my value by, I say, okay, I want, I want, instead of seeing the count, I want to see the sum. So it shows me the total sum of, total sum of um, product that this guy is giving me, right? This guy is giving me. So these are all the producers, right? So let's say I want to see, um, I, I want to see producers producing drinks alone, only drinks, producers producing drinks. I, I, I can make my product group in filter, for example, right? And I come here and I say, I want to see producers producing drinks, drinks alone. So I click on drinks. So it shows me that only this San um, Benedetto is producing drinks. Okay, so I want to see all the producers producing beverages, right? It's okay, these are the producers producing beverages and, and these are the sum of what they're producing. So you can just play around with it. It, it is, it is a, it's, it's amazing. You can do so many things with, with, um, with pivot tables, right? So let's say I remove this, I can come here and remove the field, right? So these are the producers and these are the, these are the producers and these are the volume that they're producing. So there's something in, in so if I come to pivot table analysis here, right, right, pivot table analysis, on that filter here, you will see slicer and timer, right, right? And let me just show you how to use them, right? Just high level how to use them. Slicer and timer. It's just a way to properly present your work. Now, pivot table is what you, you just begin to, I mean, if you have time, I can give you some exercise for to just you know, try your hands on different things, right? But as I said, the, the more you try, the more you'll be able to drill down on data, right? It's just, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a massive data and, and, and analysis tool. For example, if I click on insert timer, Okay, sorry, sorry, there's no date, sorry. If I click on insert um, slicer, right? Basically, a slicer is another way of analyzing data. But so, for example, let's say I want my slicer to be a um, product group, for example, product group, right? So these are the product group. So if I click on alcohol, it shows me all the producers that produce alcohol. If I click on bread, it shows me all the producers and the volume that click on bread. If I click on conflicts, same thing, or if I click on multiple ones, let's say I click on beverage, I, and I use my control key, beverage, um, cornflakes, alcohol, and cheese products. And so it gives me all the, all the producers that are producing these four together and their volumes. So you can do a lot, like a whole lot, a whole lot with um, pivot tables. And as I said, there's so many functions that we cannot cover, right? But I will leave you with this last one, chat GPT. Right, because ChatGPT will do many things that I cannot even teach you. Right, for example, right, I taught you if e function, right? I, I taught the if e function. Now, the if e function, we said that. Um, sorry, I, I have to um share my new share. Let me share my multiple. Okay, sorry. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, sorry, that's, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, okay, now, now let's say we have this, right? And we said that if, if, 
we want to write an if function here, right? Or let's say you're, you're not even sure the function you want to write, but basically they ask you that okay, these are the employees. So if if the employee meets the deadline and it's polite, meet them polite, we will say let's have a chat. I mean, let's have. I mean, um, we write all good, but if if let's say it is a, um, I mean, one of them is no sha, where is 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 going to be let's have a chat. Do you understand? Let's say Tim meets the deadline, right? He meets the deadline and is polite. It, what, what we want to put here is all good. But if any of them, if two of them are not yes, yes, if two of them are not yes, yes, if it's no, no, or yes, no, yes, no, or no, yes, we're going to put let's have a, a chat, right? That what, that's what we want to do, right? And you're not sure the formula to use, right? There is a, there is a, um, there's a an AI tool, right? Chat GPT. I'm very sure we heard about it. I don't know. Can you see my Chat GPT screen? Anybody can confirm, please. I'm trying to wrap up now. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what I can do here is that, like now, I have I have written a, I've, I've written a prompt, right? So I'm, I'm I'm telling Excel, Excel, if both values in cell in cells D6 and D8 are no, right? Then return. Let's have a chat. Let let's have a talk. Otherwise, return all good. What formula in Excel can I use? So basically, we're saying that if any of these contain, if if both cells in if both values are no, put let me talk. If not, give me all good, right? That's what I want in in Excel. And and I've told I've told them, um, ooh, sorry, why is my sorry? I have to re restart my. Um, So I've thought that ChatGPT, right? And ChatGPT is saying, okay, I should use this formula equals to if and, right? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, no, Allah, let me copy it. I don't know if it's, if, if it's correct, or, right? Let me copy it. I come here and I paste it. And it's like, oh, wow, it works. Do you understand? If it's yes, if if it's no, no, let's have a talk. If it's if, if there's yes in one of them, it's all good. That is fine. Because that's what I told it, right? Let's, let's see the second example, right? So basically, I'm just showing that even if you know the formula, right, you can use ChatGPT to get the formula, and you can now be you will not be able to now work with it, right? Basically, you only just you just explain your situation. For example, let's say I, I, I want to write the formula here, and the formula is if 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 any of this word contain video, right? Give me yes. If not, give me give me no, right? So this is twenty three. Sorry, I need to change B twenty three. B23. Okay. Now, so if 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 this thing contains video, give me yes. If not, give me no. Maybe with my with what I've known, it's only if one function I know. And I come here and say if if this if this contains contains um video, right? Contains video. Right? Give me yes. If not, give me yes. If not, give me no. That to the Excel. Ah, uh, but this one contains video now. How come it's giving me no, no, no? Ah, uh, I said this, this function is not working very well. Do, I mean, the, the if I know it's not working very well, so I come here and I tell ChatGPT, ChatGPT, you know what? See, this is the issue I have, right? I'll try the formula that if cell B twenty three includes the word video, then return yes. Otherwise, no, right? So it tells me the function to use. And yeah, I'm using three functions. I'm using each if, each number, and search function. And I did not teach you each number. I did not teach you search function. I looked at the if function. So there's no how you have known how to combine these three functions together, right? Without the help of chat GPT. So I come here and it tells me for formula to use, and I press it. I'm like, oh, huh, okay, right? Is it, let me see if it will work, right? And I drag it down, right? And like, okay, there's no video here. There's video here. No video here, right? So basically, that's the power of chat gpt right and um using um ai right to solve your um day -to -day, um this thing but but i mean so far i hope you've learned a lot but one thing that really matters to me is if you can really really give me feedback right the feedback is what i used to grow right and uh, make it better because i mean i've done this thing for three 
weeks now, this month, right? And each session will be better because of the feedback I've gotten. So please, before you lock out, right? If you cannot take your time, I've put the 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 link in the chat room. Please, I would really love if I can get feedback from everybody here. Right? We are 10 here, everybody here. Just I'd like to know what worked, right? What did not work, right? Or how can I how can I improve? If I did well, please tell me because that's that's a motivation to do well, right? If I don't do well, so maybe just tell me so I will know, okay, I will need to improve this, improve this, improve that, right? So please, please, please help. Number two things I've asked from everybody is that I'm, 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 I'm also going to send you as a email very shortly, is that please subscribe to my YouTube channel because information about more videos, in fact, this video is going to be uploaded tomorrow, I mean tonight, but it's, it's, it's going to premiere tomorrow, right? So in case you want to go back to this session and say, okay, what did I do? What did I not do? Right? You can actually go back to those, I mean, to the session and, you know, and we can have, we can have, um, you can just check back and say, okay, what do you guys in this, in, 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 in this point and you can learn and we can learn together right so those two things is what i ask of you number one i would really really love primarily if you give me feedback and number two if you could go to my i mean my youtube channel i've also put the link on the in the chat room as well um to subscribe as well right so subscribe and um give me feedback that's who, that will really 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 extremely extremely make my day so thank you so much to everybody that have come out today um I mean, I, I don't take it for granted spending two hours, 40 minutes with me so far. God bless you. I will see you um, some other time. Ciao. Um, I will also be having a, I mean, some more advanced class in Excel. We are going to be teaching some more advanced things and not um, the preliminary that I've taught today. I'm going to be having some Excel VBA class, um, Excel and financial modeling class is this coming up. So please, you also would like to, um, I mean, be, be in the know. So you can subscribe to my, I mean, on my website, but just make sure you give me, if you give me feedback or you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you, you will you'll be the first to know when any of this thing comes out. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a wonderful um, rest of the weekend. God bless you. Ciao. Bye. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Okay, bye.